Hello everyone, in this video we'll be demonstrating how to create a 3D array in C Sharp. So this video really includes both code, a code and a visual using the Array Visualizer in Visual Studio 2015. So please watch my previous video, video titled C Sharp 17 on further information on how to get the Array Visualizer, but you do need to be in Visual Studio 2015 because it was only um, available in 2015 and prior versions of C Sharp. And this is the program that we also wrote or completed or edited in C Sharp 17. I did realize that my comments were a bit conflicting, so I haven't updated the comments. What we currently have is four rows and four columns. And so in this video, we want to create a 3D array of type double and we would like, so basically 3D array means it's an array with um, with sub arrays, basically. So it's an array of 2D array. Yeah, so it's one array inside another. And so um, what we want to uh, define in this video is a 3D array with one block. Okay, so basically one array. Um, so maybe declare a 3D of type uh, with one one block or basically an array of four rows and four columns. That's what we currently have and assign the values to the array. So let's change the, uh, the array name to 3D array and change that across the program. So I won't forget to do that later. Okay, so we want to have one array. And notice now the program is complaining. One uh, And to add a dimension, add a comma. So this means the first part goes for the block or the array. And the second two, um, two dimensions will be the rows and the columns as we had in the past. Okay, so currently what we have is... Uh, I've, we've indicated the rows and each row, ha each row has one, uh, four columns. And just for explaining purposes, I've made the numbers one to represent the, um, the row number and the second digit, the decimal, the first decimal would be the column number. So two, three, four, that would be columns one, two, three, four. Okay, so to add so, so to put this within a block, we actually need to create another dimension and we would have to put all of that in here. So what we currently have is, oh, sorry, that should have been an array. So block one or, or array, block or array, Just didn't think what the best name would be, block or array, uh, maybe in, in, brackets would be better one okay so we've only got one block and let's kind of indent so we've only got one block and that block has four rows and f four columns each of the row now if we want to add another block we can do that but let's first look at what this looks like and um, for the console version uh, we would like to get the length of the block row and column so let's add another one here call it block length and so the first uh, value would be the block length and the second one would be the the row and the third one would be for the column so that needs to change and we need another loop to print out the values. So the outer loop should be for the uh, for the block, the block counter, block counter, and that would be block. We want it to loop through the number of blocks that we get. And let's close it off. And th there's a problem here as well because this is a three D a three D. Uh, array so we actually need to also add our block counter okay so let's just run this and see what it looks like on the console so these are the elements 
And currently what we have is just one array, one big array that has a 2D array, the row, uh, four rows and four columns each. Now, if I've changed this to three columns, I would need to get rid of that last value. Okay, let's close this off and run it again. Okay, so that's what we have. Now we have one block, one array that has a 2D array of three, uh, four rows. So one, two, three, and four. And four, uh, three columns. That's column one, column two, and column three. Now that's the console or say a text-based output um, to actually see what this looks like as, as a visual, what we need to do is set a breakpoint at the end of the program when we know for sure that our array has finished um, initialized or been completely initialized. So just set a breakpoint at the end and then run the program in debug mode. Now you see that this just came in as a flash showing the results of the array and then the program stops or pauses at that point waiting for you to um, give further instructions. So what we want to do is, is to see what this looks like in Array Visualizer. So we go to Debug again, go to Window, and this will only show up when you are in Debug mode. And then click on Array Visualizer, click on the array that you've got, and then you can see this nice visual. So we've only got one block, or one array, and that array has uh, four rows, so that's row one, row two, row three, and that's row four. And then you can actually see this nice um, little thumb, I wouldn't say thumbnail, but um, like a little alt alternate text that tells you where you are at. So this shows that we are in row zero, um, so, sorry, block zero, row one, and column two, which is basically three. Okay, so that's what we have. Okay, let's add another block and see what this looks like. So let, to add another block, let's just put a comma here and put another block. But before we do that, let's let the program know that we are going to be adding a second block. So a second block with four rows and three columns. And let's add another block. So you can see that the program in instantly stopped complaining. Now, uh, nothing really changes to the below program because it's all dynamically. Uh, we're getting the sizes all using methods and functions that update automatically depending on the size of the array. So this is our block one, block two. And maybe in block two, we can do something. Maybe we'll do 11.1, 11.2, 12.1. Thirteen, fourteen. So we'll just to help us see what differences it makes. Let's first just uh, stop debugging, and let's run it without debugging and just see the output in console. So this is the values of our first array, and this is the values of a second array or second block basically. Let's see what this looks like in the visual. So the breakpoint remains, but it only will stop at that point when we run the program in debug mode. Now let's look at our array visualizer. Click on the array. And now we can see a second array being added to. Oh, so you get that's just basically another array. So that's the first array. And this is the second array. And you can see the values 11, and then that's second row. So 12. And we're in the third column, by the way. Yeah. Okay, and then you can play around with these features if you like to um, to do other work. So that's basically what it is. And we can always add another block. Let's see what that would look like. Let's change. This is three blocks, four rows, three columns. We'll keep that. So the program is complaining because we do need to have our other block or just another array. So this is our third block. Let's represent it by 21, 22, and 23. You can put whatever values you want. It just uh, helps us probably 
With the visualizer, you can easily see what's going on. But if you're looking at the console version, this helps you know where you're at. OK, nothing else changes. Let's uh, stop debugging from the previous version and let's start debugging. Let's look at this. So this is our first block. This is our second block and this is our third block. Let's look at this in the visualizer and see what we get. And click on the array and you get this beautiful third block there. OK, now. Um, what you can do is also you can add another column. Let's add another column to each of these So four columns. Uh, sorry, just change that to four. And now the program instantly complains. It's happy with the first one. Let's just add another column to each one of these and see how uh, that changes. So 4.4, 11.4. Thirteen point four, fifteen point four, twenty one point four, twenty two point four, twenty three point four, twenty five point four. That's it. Let's uh, stop debugging and let's run this again in debug mode. And we can see another a fourth column has been added basically to all of our sides and uh, so all of our blocks and while we are in debug mode what we'll do is we go to array visualizer we click on our array and we have this additional column to each of our blocks so i hope this video helps you get a better visual of what 3d arrays look like now stay tuned for uh, additional uh, dimensions to our array i'll see you